Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're at in the world. My name is Master Paul. I'm honored to be with you today. It is a Tuesday, and it is the 22nd of February. Have you noticed how quickly this month is going by? We are moving quite rapidly. Uh, <laughs> the only thing I notice about the month of February is I have to pay my bills faster. Um, just kidding. So I want to welcome all of you and thank you for coming to today's live stream. <clears throat> As always, we will be focusing on how we can bring uh, balance, uh, alignment, and blessings into our life using the wisdom and teachings that Dr. and Master Shah has brought to humanity. And today we'll be focusing on bringing balance and alignment to our relationships with the power of forgiveness. Now, there are many different ways we can bring alignment to our relationship and they each have a very unique and significant way in which they can occur. <clears throat> For example, you could uh, use the power of gratitude to bring alignment to a relationship. You can use the power of service. You could use, of course, the power of love. You could even use harmony. Today, we'll be working with the power of forgiveness and soul power, and I'm going to share with you how to employ the four powers collectively <clears throat> with the power of forgiveness to bring about tremendous, tremendous alignment uh, and to bring about the sustaining of the healthiest possible relationship that you can have. If you're already in a relationship, you would like it to be healthier, this could have great value to you. If you are not in a relationship uh, and you would like to have a better one, this could be of value to you. If you um, if you are in a condition where you have uh, kept yourself from having relationships because of pain and suffering from previous ones, this will definitely be of value to you as well. So I encourage those who are tuning in for the very first time watching this on a replay to please uh, stay the entire time. I have been doing live streams <coughs> now, <coughs> excuse me, about, um, gosh, almost about six or seven months and I'm offering a Monday through Thursdays at the same time. And uh, there is a tremendous, tremendous value in each one of these. So if you're not able to stay, I encourage you to uh, right click on the video and save this URL uh, to review later. I always offer um, guidance, wisdom, teaching, and most importantly, blessings. Uh, the blessings in and of themselves are extraordinary. And the best part is they come towards the end after you understand the value of the wisdom and the blessings. So I encourage you to stay. So I want to acknowledge and welcome all those that are joining me right now. Aloha Ben, uh, Aloha Marina, welcome Dana. <coughs> Thank you Kristen for all your service. Aloha Tawana and Kristen Strachan. Welcome Elaine and Zilki. Hi CJ, hi Judas. Aloha Linda, Aloha Janet, and C, you've joined us again. Thank you, C. Aloha Kevin, good to see you joining us here today. <coughs> Tammy Hunter, welcome. Aloha Don, and Aloha Alicia. I'm glad to see the blessings you received last week are assisting you in such a powerful way. Aloha Patrice, and welcome Chrissy Kota, welcome. And so I'm sure others will join. Thank you as always for hitting the share button, letting other people know about this. So today, as you can tell, I'm at Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center. This is usually my responsibilities on Tuesdays. Very blessed. If you ever have a chance, no matter where you're at in the world, if you have an opportunity to go to one of the Tao Healing Centers uh, connected to Master Shaw, without a doubt, you are one of the most blessed. Because at the centers, they are, they have, they have received extraordinary transmissions. Um, those that have spiritual uh, eyes can see heaven. They can see heaven's animals. And there are extraordinary calligraphies like the one behind me at these centers. Uh, the Honolulu Center, we have some of the most in the entirety of the nation, in the world, excuse me, <coughs> with um, I think several hundred of them that are here. And we have uh, 40 or so that are scrolled and ready to go. And they just, the, the power that is infused into these calligraphies, uh, all layers of Divine Tao Source are connected to these. 
And when you are in the field, literally just having the Ling Guang calligraphy, Ling Guang Ling means soul. It's a Mandarin Chinese word that means soul. And Guang means light. So soul light calligraphy, that's what's behind me. And so just having that through this video, you are being served. <clears throat> so today we will be talking about the nature of relationships and using the power of forgiveness to bring about uh, blessings or resolve and balance and alignment to the various areas that it shows up in our life. Relationship blockages can impact us negatively in so many ways. Uh, if you have relationship blockages with someone you're currently with and you have um, you know, lack of effective or, or healthy communication, that follows you to work. The work is then more stressful. Stress is, according to, uh, <clears throat> I want to say John Hopkins University, I believe I'm correct on that, uh, is the culprit of up to 90% of our physical health maladies. Think about that. Up to 90% is related to stress. One of the major uh, precursors to stress is the conditions that bring it on. And a big, uh, big culprit in, is in relationships. So the question becomes, why are relationships so stressful? They should be enjoyable. They should be uh, fulfilling our heart. Excuse me again. But for most of us, they are not. They are creating stress. This, uh, this clearing of the throat thing just came on in the last hour or so. That's what happens when you stay in the, in the center as long as I do. <coughs> it helps things to clear. So welcome, Lily. Uh, welcome, Kathy Campbell. Welcome, Amy. Good to see you, Amy. I don't believe I've seen you here before, so welcome. Welcome, Carol. And Norma, welcome Sharon. Thank you all for joining. Again, thank you all for hitting the share button. So as we move into this subject matter, I hope that this will serve you. <clears throat> what I want to do today is I want to open it up to some questions. And I will um, respond with some sacred wisdom. It will be a general response. And the general response will be based on Master Shah's uh, Tao and soul based wisdom to assist you uh, with your specific question. Uh, now, then we'll also do practices a little bit later. So, uh, if you have a specific relationship or lack thereof, um, I will offer you some, some generalized soul and Tao guidance <coughs> and, um, and then uh, offer it also in the form of a teaching. So let's connect first, heart to heart, soul to soul, placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position, dropping the left hand in front of the heart center, the right hand gently pointed towards the heavenly realms, and we're going to invite in the beings of light. Dear all layers of the divine, the Tao, the source, all beings of light serving the plan of the light side, including masters and ascendant masters, lamas, gurus, sifu, saints, kahunas, all beings of light, known and unknown, including the Great Ones, Beloved Jesus, Beloved Mother Mary, Beloved Buddha, Beloved Kuan Yin, Beloved Krishna, uh, Ganesha. We love you, we honor you, we respect you, we deeply appreciate you. I'm deeply honored to ask for your presence here today to serve all of those that are with us, all of those on the line, all of those that are coming, to bring alignment, to bring blessings to their relationship. We ask that you come to sit in each of our heart centers in whatever way is most appropriate <clears throat> and that you uh, uh, assist us in receiving the wisdom that is best for us at this time uh, so that we can apply it in our relationships bringing about the greatest values. I'm very honored and grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony, transmitted to all souls in all universes, we love you, we honor you, deeply appreciate you. We ask that you turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to chant with us to bring love, peace, and harmony to all souls. For those that are new, I encourage you to close your eyes, receive the blessings that comes through this song. Also, Kristen has posted links for the multilingual over many, many languages, 30 plus languages, and of course the download for the MP3. Everybody else, please join with me. <coughs> Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, Li. 
Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Oh, I wash in her name. Oh, I tread one lane. Only in wrong her mushroom song. Song I ping on a say. Song I ping on a say, I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Let us chant again. Lula, lula, li, lula, lula, la, li, lula, lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula, lula, li, lula. Wo ai wo shin herling. Oh, I tran ran lay, Wong li hing rong, her mu shur shang, Shong ai ping an a se, Shong ai ping an a se, I love my heart and soul, I love all humanity, Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. 好，好，好。Thank you, thank you, thank you. How is a Mandarin Chinese word that Master Sha uses, and it means perfect, complete, get well. <clears throat> we say thank you three times. The first thank you is to our beloved Creator. The second thank you is to all of the beings of light who are present at this time serving. Our third thank you is to our own soul. So I'm very excited. We've had some new folks come, and we've had some a lot of returning folks I haven't seen in a while. So welcome Sharon Dodd. Welcome Anne Kristen Eckhart. Welcome uh, Richard Mall. Uh, welcome Karen Hogan. Welcome Brianna. Welcome. Uh, Monica uh, and welcome Emma welcome also Raul good to see you here Raul <clears throat> so today we're focusing on relationships I ask each of you if it is of interest to you I will not be doing soul readings directly on on um, the live streams anymore and one of the reasons why is because uh, the nature of people's mindsets it's important that we protect um, my teacher, Master Shah. And it's important that people do not have the wrong thinking about what is a soul reading. So when I ask you to write a question, know that I won't be offering it in the form of a divine flow. What I will do is I will offer the answer in the form of soul wisdom so that you'll have a generalized, uh, greater understanding of soul, soul power, and the wisdom that can bring about transformation in your relationship. Okay? So please ask a question if you have one. Uh, specific to any relationship you might have, uh, any relationships you've had in the past. Um, and if you can, um, state, you know, I, you know, I've had this blockage and I just don't know what to do about it. Um, because I'm not doing a soul reading, so I'm not, you know, getting information from the soul world to guide you on that. I can do that on private sessions. We're just not uh, doing it anymore in the live conditions, okay? So feel free to ask some questions. <clears throat> but offer some additional specifics and then I can give you some soul power and soul wisdom based answers. And I will continue to chat while I'm waiting for some of those questions to come in. So aloha and welcome Joanne. So generally speaking, uh, we are all souls. And as a soul, we live forever. And accordingly, we have <laughs> many, 
many, many, many, many, many relationships. We have relationships with the divine. We have relationships with ourself, and certainly we have relationships with other people. And the dilemma in the relationships with those that are closest to us is they tend to push a lot of our buttons. They tend to create a lot of our um, suffering in life. And they also are the source for a great deal of our wealth and our love. And so it's a juxtaposition. The relationships can be the source of our greatest gains and the source of our greatest sufferings. The, the dichotomy between the two is that we want to be able to find a way where we can be in relationship, past, present, or future, in a way where we have the least amount of suffering and the greatest amount of benefit. And so in doing so, <clears throat> we want to um, acknowledge the basic foundational teachings of soul and how it applies to relationship. And so what I mean by that is, as a soul, we, the soul does live forever. We, on the other hand, live a very short span of time, you know, 100 years or so. And in this process of experience in this life, we come into it, as indicated from our many teachings you've heard before, with spiritual virtue and spiritual debt. We come into it with virtue to be in that relationship with that individual and debt in that relationship with that individual. Now, since we have many, many relationships, we have close ones and we have ones that are a little farther away from us, like work relationships. <clears throat> but in any case, if there's any form of imbalance in that relationship, if there's any form of a lack of alignment, it always boils back to um, spiritual debt. Now, you might hear the word karma, you might hear the uh, other words, deeds, etc. Uh, but I am using the word spiritual debt because that is what creates for us <clears throat> the greatest um, uh, opportunity is a really good word. It creates an exceptional opportunity to bring resolve. Because if we don't bring resolve, it keeps coming back to us in the form of getting thwacked over the head. You continue to suffer emotionally, continue to suffer mentally. It can hamper your sleep. It can hamper your finances. It can hamper virtually every part of your life. So we want to look at any blockage area as an opportunity to resolve. This is one of the first keys. I'm going to scroll back now to some of the <coughs> questions and see if we can offer some enlightenment. Uh, based on some soul wisdom. So Kristen Strachan, how do we go about healing our relationship with the divine? Or her question is the divine mission. So the divine mission uh, is love. Okay, it's, it's not a secret. Um, the divine creator is love. We have fallen away from that in various ways. If we were 100% in alignment with it, we wouldn't be here in this red dirt place. So how, the question is, uh, how do we go about healing the relationship with the divine and the divine mission? So because today we're focusing on the subject of forgiveness versus gratitude versus harmony versus service or other ways to bring uh, balancing to things, we're going to specifically answer this under the, the guise of forgiveness. So forgiveness is it is a one-stop answer. Why is it so hard for us to offer into any relationship? One of the most important relationships we can possibly have is with our Creator. One of the greatest areas where we have blockage as a human being is in relationship with our Creator. <clears throat> the divine mission is love with the Creator, a complete oneness, a 100% oneness. When we have that, we emanate that. We are a vessel through which that love then radiates out to everybody else. So the question is, how can we bring healing to the relationship with the divine mission, which is of love? It is to be in love in, in every way possible with Creator. Because when we reach that as high as possible, that is what we radiate out. Why is that so important? And how does that help the divine mission? How does that heal the divine mission of love? It helps and heals the divine mission <clears throat> because we are all one from that same creator. We are not separate except in our ego and our mind. We can speak that we are one, but the knowingness can only occur through the highest layers of love and the releasing of blockages to that love, which can occur through forgiveness. <clears throat> Excuse me again. So when we uh, 
take the time to ask for forgiveness with individuals and especially with the divine. Why would we ask forgiveness from the divine? Why would we ask God for forgiveness? Has any of you in your entire life ever raised your fist to the divine, to, to our creator? Why did you do this to me? I don't understand. What's, what's wrong with me? You know, why are you so mean to me? Why did you cause this to happen, God? So this creates a separation. This is saying that I am separate from the divine. This is saying you're responsible for everything that happens to me. Alignment and healing yourself with the divine and with the divine mission is identifying the ways in which you've created separation. Once you do that, you do forgiveness with that specific way in which you have created that separation. So that's a, a short answer to a very big question, Krishna, and I hope that helps. I'm on to the next question. Amy, how can I improve my romantic relationship? Very good question. This has a wonderful answer. Dear the soul of my significant other, please come. Now you're not talking directly to the individual, you're talking to the soul. I love you. Now their soul comes instantly. Why does their soul come instantly? Because souls are not limited by time or space. Physical bodies are. <coughs> souls, his soul, your soul, her soul, your soul, <coughs> in any relationship, this wisdom applies. The souls of you and this person, they want the highest possible outcome for both of you. They do not want arguing. They do not want uh, suffering. They do not want anything other than the highest possible love because they know that that will assist the entirety. They know that that will self-clear your guys' spiritual debt with each other. The reason we come together is because we have spiritual virtue and spiritual debt. If you have a lot of good spiritual virtue, that means you guys go up, 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 up. Everything is peachy keen. Life is wonderful. If, however, you're button up heads a lot, there's a lack of romance, a lack of affection, a lack of attention, <clears throat> which is uh, the question here then that needs to be addressed at the level of soul first. What's happened is the relationship in many cases, this is from experience from my soulmate program, the relationship in many cases has gone by the wayside. That attraction has dissipated. The reason attraction dissipates according to my understanding is yes, there is you know some spiritual debt blockages there, but we're living in a physical world. And intimacy is directly related to communication. Intimacy is acknowledgement. Intimacy is validation. Intimacy is, is hearing and listening to each other in such a way where there is, ah, I feel heard, I feel loved, I feel understood. And for the most part, <laughs> that lacks in a lot of relationships. Um, it boils back to a lack of, of education and a lack of ability for one or the other to accomplish that simple real world physical level thing. So there are two ways you approach this, from the soul level and from the physical world level. Women, write this down, get a pen and paper. On the soul world level, the pen and paper is for the physical world level stuff. On the soul world level, <clears throat> you connect at the level of soul. Remember, his soul, your soul, her soul, your soul, they want uh, the best. Dear the soul of my beloved one, I love you. Uh, I want you to know that my heart is very connected to yours. I want you to know that I am in need of, of attention, of romance, of physical connection. When I don't have this physical connection, um, then I, these needs are not being met, these feelings are not being met. I'm not blaming you, I'm taking responsibility, but I want you to know that I have these needs and I have these feelings. When these needs and feelings are fulfilled, then I'm able to be more present to you, more, more uh, whatever, okay? Now remember, you're talking to the soul. You would love to have this conversation with the physical being, but in reality, they don't know what to do with it, um, in most cases anyway. And so, when you have this conversation with the soul, you say, so I, uh, I would like to ask forgiveness, forgiveness. If in this or any time I have held affection back from you, if in this or any time I have not communicated with you in such a way that there was uh, validation, 
appreciation, respect, honoring, uh, if there was not enough romance, if I held my love back from you, if I held physical touch and, and attention from you, I deeply and sincerely apologize. Now, this is the spiritual debt part. It's possible that that individual is not connecting in this way romantically because of that being held back from them in a previous time and you don't know about it. This is removing that as a possibility. It may be accurate, it may not. But when you do this practice and you communicate at the level of soul and you bring in forgiveness, you have the greatest propensity of that not being part of the issue. That resolves that part if that is part of the issue. You understand that? Now we go to the physical side, okay, ladies? Uh, Nonviolent communication, NVC, nonviolent communication, nvc.org. This is from personal experience. I had a very, very um, unpleasant relationship many, many years ago, but I learned uh, miracle level stuff on about how to communicate. And this was the source of it. It was invented by a gentleman who worked for presidents. And the presidents would send him and go, go to this warring nation where these two tribes are hacking up each other's families. One tribe goes to the other, hacks up their family, and they have these wars. They go fix this, please. So this man goes in there and he starts speaking and teaching them feelings and needs. <clears throat> he teaches them a vocabulary. Most, uh, most women have a vocabulary of emotions of about 20 words. Most men have a vocabulary of between 5 and 10. And we don't have enough feeling in the vocabulary. Therefore, when, we, when a woman expresses her emotions to the man, the man shuts down, doesn't know what to do with it. Therefore, she does not get validated. Therefore, she does not have uh, her, um, her feelings heard and met. And uh, therefore, she shuts down, which creates resistance. Hence, they go the other way. There's no more romance. Um, how do we rekindle that? Communication, feelings and needs, soul level working on it. Receive crown chakra blessings to clear the soul level blockages. Um, do forgiveness practice, but also bring real world things into it, which, can, which causes uh, effective communication of feelings and needs. So this is a very, very short and cursory answer to a, a question that will assist everybody on the line here. And I encourage you to do some more homework around that. For the reason I have this knowledge is because I went through the suffering. Um, for any of those that, that uh, would like to bring resolve to their to existing or future relationships, please look into my Soulmate Attraction System program. I do personal one-on-one -on -one, uh, assistance using some of this wisdom. Okay, thanks for that question. Hopefully that assisted you. Okay, and Raul, what's the theme for the question? Uh, relationships, anything associated with relationships and how I can give you some general soul guidance. Okay, Don says, I am concerned about my children and their distancing from me with all the medical issues and I want to relieve their fears and return to our connection. Okay, excellent soul level communication, Don. They're the soul of my children. Please come. I love you, honor you, and appreciate you. I wish to acknowledge your fears. I wish to acknowledge what's happening for you. <clears throat> you may have many things going on for you, including the fear of what would happen if I die, the fear of, of how you might handle it given your current financial situation. Many fears might be coming up for you. I want to acknowledge those for you and, and share with you that it is not your responsibility, etc., etc. Wherever you might be thinking there, their processes are coming from, you do your best to address that at the level of soul. You also share with them that um, you have a unique soul journey separate from theirs and that you are, are dealing with things at the level uh, of the highest levels that you can and that you wish very much to receive their love, affection, and attention. That when you receive their love, affection, and attention, it helps you because it fulfills this need, it fulfills um, um, uh, this emotion. That you feel um, grateful and uh, appreciated, and you also feel loved, and um, uh, you know, what, what's happening when those, when those um, needs are not met. Identify those emotions. 
have this conversation with their soul. Do forgiveness practice with them for any time in the past lifetimes when you have not uh, been present when they went through their suffering, when they were ill. Maybe you were at war and they were home suffering and they wished you were home. Maybe you, um, you were afraid and you went the other way. Ask for forgiveness for the same things that you are feeling that you might have caused those experiences upon them at a previous time. And then um, use the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony, Don. Uh, dear the soul song of love, peace, and harmony, I love you. You, my children, ha have received the song on their soul. Uh, please turn on, and as I chant love, peace, and harmony, please offer blessings to all of our relationships uh, collectively so that they um, return to healthy communication with me as appropriate. So this is how you would use soul wisdom uh, and soul communication to resolve it at that level. Be consistent, don't do it once, do it consistently. One or two times a day, uh, do it for a week, two weeks. You could be very surprised at the results, okay? <clears throat> Keep me posted. I'd like to know how that goes for you, Don. So, um, Tawana says, my relationship with my little ones, father is strained having a hard time trusting again and showing compassion. What can I do to help be trusting and compassionate? <clears throat> okay. Um, you have to walk a fine line here, Tawana. You don't want to be the rug that is being walked upon, but you also want to uh, honor the child's father in a way that he can be the best that he can be. And so um, you would be good to, to utilize this cnbc.org and after you do soul conferencing with the father, telling him about uh, what your concerns are when he does thoughts or words or actions that build distrust, um, that it brings about fear, uh, it brings about concerns for uh, your future communication with him and how he might be Im impacting the child, okay? And you want to say it in the form of a feeling and a need eventually. You do this first at the level of soul. You, uh, you call forth the soul of the child and the husband and you do forgiveness practice with all of them. And after you do that for a week or two or three weeks and you become familiar with the verbiage of feelings and needs, <clears throat> then you might have a conversation with them. It's important for everybody that's listening that when you have a conversation, you, you avoid the words, you make me feel. If I say to you, you make me feel, what's happening to my finger? Same thing happens with the voice, you make me feel. Obviously, they're going to respond defensively. Don't do that, be smart. You have to communicate lovingly and compassionately. I want to share that when I observed this communication that I had some feelings and needs that came up. I want you to know that I'm not blaming you, but I want you to know what's happening for me when I observe this communication. Because I'd really like it to, uh, if possible, for it to not happen in the future. Maybe a communication could happen differently in the future. This is uh, non-invasive. This is a form of communication that doesn't point a finger at them, but it lets them know how you are impacted. Now they might still respond, respond defensively, in which case you say, thank you, I'm grateful to understand how you heard this information. Uh, that's not my intention for you to react in such a way, because I'm not blaming you. So let me re restate this. And then you just repeat exactly what you just said. The second time they will hear it, they will hear your feelings, they will hear your needs, and they will open their heart, and they will take responsibility. It is a learned process that will change your life if you take the time to learn it, okay? So that should help all of you as well. Marina, need to find romance again. How do you do that? Okay. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> sign up for my soulmate attraction system. Uh, <laughs> how do we do that? Using the power of soul. First of all, recognize that if we are without romance at this time, 
we often have something going on in our own hearts and in our own heads that is trying to avoid the pain and the suffering so that we don't have it again. So we make a list of everything that we want. I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. We have another column, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this. Uh, and then I can hear you all laughing. And, and, so, and then we go out there and we try to attract it, okay? And we get that beautiful soul that comes to us. Oh, this is the one, yay, this is the one. And so we go about, we tell all of our girlfriends, we tell all of our guy friends, and we uh, look for all the clues. You know, is this, is, this, is this acting out in this way? It's not on my don't want list. So you're looking for that, you're keeping an eye on that. And, um, and then also on the want list, oh, he's got this and this and this, you know, uh, attribute. And sure enough, 18 months into it, their relationship may have some hiccups. Maybe even before that, you never know. So prior to bringing romance into your life, what I would suggest, and this doesn't matter if you're married or you've been in a relationship for a long, 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 long time, apply what I suggested about learning the feelings and needs so you can clue into yourself. This is for, um, you can identify your own, your own feelings and needs. So then you can have effective communication with the spouse that's in your relationship. From a woman to a guy level, one of the reasons the guy uh, moves away from um, uh, romance in a relationship and this isn't always the case okay but a guy needs just a few things a guy needs to feel he's he is uh, strong that he is the king of the castle uh, doesn't mean that that he actually is but he needs to to believe this um, a guy needs to definitely f uh, feel um, like he is wanted and needed and that he is capable that uh, he without him you would not be able to accomplish at least 20 things, okay? <clears throat> Again, um, even though they have big egos, typically have um, a need for a lot of validation. And it needs to be honest and it needs to be real. But something, let's say he's driving you someplace and let's say you're not very good with directions. You say to him, you know one thing I really appreciate about you? You know where you're going. I just, I just share with you, honey, I need to go here and boom, you go there. And you're so efficient at it. And then you shut up. You don't know what kind of power that kind of a statement has. Okay? You do that. You just look for all those little things that you appreciate. And you only release one a day, one every other day. There's no end to them if you actually look. The man will start boosting his chest up, throwing his shoulders back, feeling gratitude and appreciation. This will bring about the right conditions for romance amongst the other things that I've mentioned, okay? All right. Aloha, Pamela. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Sharon Dodd, myself and husband, very mixed relationship, don't know how to resolve our issues and, is it res and, and if it's resolvable. Okay, so you have a good start, Sharon. Um, our relationship issues are resolvable. Now, the key to understanding that <clears throat> is the understanding of the spiritual debt and spiritual virtue that runs through relationships. The length of time, of course, creates these crevices and these cracks that we have these major dips in. So we tend to run through life with these blockages on many levels. And we're familiar with their reactions, so we don't approach it that way. We try to approach it different ways. So the longer term relationships can be very uh, cumbersome in many ways. And, but we went into them with the right values. So how do we unwind that? And how do we bring back that healthier aspects that came early on in those relationships? A bucket load of forgiveness is one of the keys. Forgiveness works on a very simple thing. If you just do a blanket forgiveness, it's kind of like saying, let's eat Kentucky Fried Chicken the rest of our life. Who wants to sign up for eating the same thing the rest of their life? Blanket forgiveness is effective in that it will feed you and that you'll, you'll get food to go through the day, but it's not going to serve your relationship in the healthiest way or anything if you do a blanket forgiveness. How do you do specific forgiveness? For any of the questions that's coming through here, you can do specific forgiveness. How? What you do is you look at where are you suffering? Very simple. Okay? If you're suffering from a lack of romance, if you're suffering from a, 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 um, a lack of a love life, 
it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of a relationship and the spouse is is uh, blaming you for something once again there's all those little things that pop up in a relationship usually there's 10 a day but you're so used to them if it's a long-term relationship you just they just blend together and you have a auto response but if you actually pay attention to all those little things that cause you the irritation that is your spice that is your opportunity to bring about resolve dear the soul of my spouse privately dear the soul of my spouse please come I love you I know that it might not look like that sometimes but I'm grateful I have a vested interest in this relationship I would like to bring about more and more love communication and connection I noticed 10 minutes ago during this communication that you, you said this this and that and I noticed that I felt very very uh, irritated and dejected and whatever else you were feeling whatever your needs are now this is the point ladies this is the point men listen carefully this is not about um, being right this is about recognizing two points of opportunity the first is self-love because if you can identify your feelings and needs you can literally self-validate yeah when he said this to me I was feeling really really you know saddened because what I was really needing was simply to be heard and validated I love myself for knowing that this was what I was needing I love myself for uh, recognizing that my husband doesn't have the ability to to do this he doesn't have the skill set yet and I am going to self-love myself and not beat up on myself and not put myself down uh, and I'm going to do better to help bring about love, peace, and harmony in the household. So that's part of the opportunity. The second part, to the soul of my husband, these are my feelings and needs. I would like in the future when we have communications for you to listen a little bit better, for you to respond in this and this and this way. Uh, also, that's the soul communication part. The last part is the forgiveness. Dear my husband, wife, whatever, I recognize that I have had these feelings of dejection of da, 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 whatever it is and the need for attention and validation and I know that our relationship has karma in it our relationship has spiritual debt and I recognize that it is entirely possible that I have communicated with you in the same way you are currently communicating with me and if you felt dejected like I currently do, if you felt unvalidated like I currently do in any previous time, I truly, deeply, and sincerely apologize to you. Now, what happens when you do this is you're moving into a place of compassion. You're moving into a place of bringing healing to a relationship. And when you re-enter the physical presence of this person, you can be much more in recognition of their lack in the physical world of dealing with this because they don't have the tools which you're going to assist them with and they don't have the, the, the wisdom to, to bring about resolve. But you do because you're working on the level of soul. You're, you're working on the level of forgiveness and you're doing self-validation. And slowly you empower them through what you learn. So this is how you can bring about healing in, in long-term relationships and how you can ensure a long-term relationship when you begin new relationships. Okay? All right. Hopes that helps. Okay, Lily, I was wondering if I should stay with my partner or should I leave as we no longer have the same goals? He is going through financial difficulties. Thank you, Master Paul and the Divine. Any insights would be appreciated. Okay. Give me a second, Lily. So whenever anybody is in a position of unsurety in a relationship, it is important to complete it properly. Meaning, you go forward or it dissolves 
in the highest and best way. So in order to figure that out, you have to do your part by utilizing the wisdoms that have already been shared. If the relationship is not meant together to be together, then the soul world understands that. The soul world does not force you into anything, and it does not force you out of anything. The soul world is all about giving you opportunities to dissolve problems and to bring about um, uh, balance to where there is imbalances. Now, I know there's probably another 10 questions below Lily's, but I, I want everybody to listen. Every question that is being asked has answers for you. So even though I might not get to your answer directly, there's a lot of wisdom that can assist you tremendously. My encouragement to everybody is listen again. I can tell you also that divine services, uh, which, which go about clearing the Shen Qi and Jing blockages related to uh, the imbalances between you and the other person, it can literally lift off lifetimes of crud. Okay, so if you just want to make it easier, make sure you contact me for the divine services. All right, so Lily, in order to bring about the highest and best resolve in any relationship, the first step is recognizing that if you've been in a relationship for any period of time, what I consider to be three months or greater, any period of time, then there are some, uh, some lifetimes with that individual. And so you don't want to make a mistake in a relationship that is not resolved while you're in it. Why? Because you're just going to have to do it again. You're going to have to do it again either in a new relationship or in a new lifetime with that same soul. Uh, it, it, people, if they find themselves in a relationship that has a continuing pattern, maybe it's incest, maybe it's abuse, maybe it's who knows what, okay? Um, whatever that pattern is, the pattern returns for a reason. The lessons haven't been learned. The, uh, the opportunities haven't been understood, okay? And so any relationship you're in, Always do your best to bring about the highest and best resolve. And when you accomplish that, you'll know because it will either be better or it will dissolve and go the other direction. Either case, you've done your job. If you, uh, you bring forgiveness into the relationship, if you catch where it's going south, if you identify um, the different triggers that irritate you and you go off on your own for a few minutes and you're okay, this was the trigger. What was I feeling? What was I needing? You self work on yourself. Give yourself love. You call forth their soul. You say, you know, I didn't really enjoy this. I'd really like it to be better like this. And then you do forgiveness practice in case you had ever brought those conditions upon them. You just keep duplicating this. The, you might find yourself doing this for a long term relationship 10 times a day, especially when you start paying attention to all those little things that you shove off to the side. And, but what you'll discover is stuff comes to the surface that love could return or that the worst that you could possibly imagine could come to the surface. Uh, for example, let's say you do this one, two, three months, and then the spouse says, I want to leave. I'm done. You need to understand that that's heaven standing behind you saying you have completed this relationship. It's time to move forward. That is not a good thing if it happens and you haven't done the work. But if you've done all of the inner work and all the outer work and the relationship dissolves, that means you are more than ready for a much healthier, much more loving relationship. There's no need to hang on to any baggage. There's no need to, to work through any stuff. And it's likely that if that were to occur, then the relationship would dissolve with very good, uh, uh, a very good and loving outcome. It would be a harmless dissolve because you had done the work in advance. So either way, if it dissolves or if it moves forward with love, it's a good thing. How you do it is by applying things in this way. So I hope that serves all of you very well. Okay, Carol says, how can I convince my love that it's always possible to remain sweet, uplifted love if we choose it? I know it's possible. Uh, don't ask any hard questions, okay, Carol? You know, everybody's asking me all of these simple questions, right? Carol, what kind of questions? How hard is that one to answer? 
Good enough. Okay, let's see what I can do with that one. Each person has their filters. They have their ego, they have their personality, they have their heart that is opened only so much. We cannot control the other person. We can't. You just, whoever you are, you need to get that out of your head. If you try to control, you will create problems. What we can do is we can, we can support in a very loving way them opening of their hearts to where they come to those realizations by themselves. Now, we have to do this without attachment. We have to do this with love and compassion. If we do it with an attachment, we're just going to be irritated. So if you've chosen to be in the relationship with that individual and we want to bring them uh, more and more into the alignment with higher and higher love, then we need to be A, self-responsible with everything we've talked about, but B, also recognize that they do have their own soul journey, that their heart does have the ability to open, but we need to assist them with that process, and that they have their own time frame to accomplish it on, okay? If you can keep those as a baseline, then you can actually apply soul power to create great results. A good example. Uh, uh, last week, Monday, uh, and I can open it up again for those that are interested, I offered an open the heart and soul blessing. It was a crown chakra blessing and three days of calligraphy uh, f uh, that were specifically for opening the heart and soul. Now it can be applied to an individual, it can be applied to a relationship, or both individuals and the soul of the relationship. What's the difference? The relationship soul uh, has been around a lot longer than your personality or his personality. The relationship soul, you guys might have been going around this circle 36 lifetimes. And so the relationship soul needs to open its heart and soul and have its blockages cleared individually. You could, could benefit from that as well. So, and, and I believe, Carol, you may have already have done that. Um, but in any case, this is for everybody's wisdom. If you want to bring uh, love into that relationship, um, you do the best you can to make them aware of love. You do the best you can to make them aware of how they can encourage and support your feelings and needs. I taught you just a little while ago how you can communicate with the man to help them feel more bolstered and secure. Men are insecure, ladies, okay? Uh, you'll find about 10% are truly secure. Most of them are just a whole lot of puff and ego. So you need to remind them of how strong they are through all the many ways that are available. Um, women already have open hearts for the most part. They know how to keep their hearts open. They're, they're, they're just nurturing by nature. Men, uh, we're, we, we grow up with the DNA and, and all of those things that in general cause us to have a little more closed hearts. Now, gay men, for example, their hearts are much more open. Um, so that's not always true, but it is true in general for the uh, heterosexual relationship. And so you want to do your part by soul communicating, as indicated earlier, and by teaching their soul. This is something that you can all do. Dear the soul of my spouse, please come. I would like you to do these practices with me. When I trace this calligraphy of uh, Da I, the greatest love, I mean, if you don't have the book, you can get it, The Greatest Love, which is in the Soul Over Matter book. It's in the Soul Healing Miracles book. It's in a variety of books. Um, Dear the soul of my husband, my wife, my spouse, please come. As I do this practice today, as I meditate, as I chant divine love, Bless us, divine love, bless our relationship. As I trace this calligraphy to bless our relationship, to open up our hearts, please chant with me. And please do this forgiveness practice with me. You're doing your practice anyway, or maybe you're not, but if you aren't and you'd like this result, do it. And then you do it consistently. 
make an agreement with yourself. I will do this for 21 days. I will sit down for at least 15 minutes, trace this calligraphy, do a forgiveness practice with my spouse, and measure things in 21 days. You're going to be surprised. The results were always going to be greater than it was. Maybe only one percentage point greater, but it will be greater simply because forgiveness uh, brings inner peace and inner joy. Love melts all blockages. And so when you apply the two of them together, you can't not get some benefit, okay? So that's how you can accomplish that. I hope that assists you. Okay, so Sharon, uh, hopefully you got to hear that response to your full uh, information for you. If not, please listen further. Okay, I have time for one more answer. Let's see, and welcome uh, Johnny. Welcome Magdalene. You're very welcome, Don, for the answer. Welcome Dvorka and daughter. Welcome Becky Atkins. Welcome Loveness. Welcome Doug Ferrari. Uh, and welcome Kavehi. Welcome Katie. So for all those that came in in this last 15-20 minutes, please go back and review the, uh, the previous uh, information. I tell you, the amount of information in there can solve a lot of problems if you guys just apply it. So let's uh, do a blessing now. So I will use Da I, the greatest love, and the greatest love calligraphy. There is a very special blessing put into this calligraphy, so I will invoke that very special blessing. And um, we will offer everybody a huge blessing for their relationship of choice. Choose one relationship only. And this blessing will be for both of you and the relationship soul itself. So make that request to heaven at this time, and I will prepare. So we're going to do a quick forgiveness practice. So please repeat after me with your eyes closed. Sit up straight. Lotus position or your feet flat on the floor. <clears throat> and if you're comfortable, please repeat after me. Dear the soul of my spouse. You can state their name or significant other. Whatever the relationship choice is, I love you. If it's you don't have anyone in your life, did the soul of my future soulmate or soulmates please come? I love you. I deeply appreciate our relationship, the possibility of our relationship. I wish to ask for forgiveness for whatever I may have done, past, present, or future, that could create imbalance and a lack of alignment to the highest love that we could have in our relationship. I know that I have created imbalances, that I have created spiritual debt through my wrong thoughts, wrong words, and wrong actions in this and other times, and I wish to deeply and sincerely apologize. I ask most sincerely that you accept my forgiveness. I wish very much for our relationship to be filled with more and more love. I wish very much for our relationship, if it is in the future, to be of the highest purity and the highest love. And I'm very grateful for this opportunity to communicate with you today. I ask that you open your heart and soul and receive this blessing that is being offered at this time. Thank you. So while I'm offering this blessing through the special Da'ai Greatest Love Calligraphy, keep your, uh, your focus on the relationship. See the both of you. See the radiant light coming to you from every direction, clearing blockages in your heart centers, clearing negative mindsets, negative attitudes, and negative beliefs from uh, your organs and systems and your brain and also blessing you with the highest divine's love, okay? I will begin. 
to the soul of this calligraphy, the countless da'ai blessings in this calligraphy. Please come out at this time. Offer blessings as appropriate to all those that will watch this video. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Da'ai, 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 da ai da ai da ai da ai greatest love melts my relationship blockages divine love opens our hearts and souls. Thy greatest love blesses our relationship. Divine love releases love blockages. Thy greatest love attracts to me the perfect relationship. Thy greatest love blesses my relationship. Welcome, Deborah. Please receive the blessing. Thy greatest love <clears throat> opens my heart and soul. Thy greatest love clears soul, heart, mind, body blockages. Thy greatest love releases negative memories. Thy greatest love releases negative mindsets. Thy greatest love releases negative attitudes. Thy greatest love opens our hearts and souls. <clears throat> Thy greatest love melts all blockages. Thy greatest love opens my heart and soul. Thy, Thy greatest love. Thy, Thy highest divine love. Thy, Thy blesses our relationship. Thy, Thy blesses our relationship. Thy, Thy blesses my blockages. Thy, Thy boosts my positivity. Thy, Thy brings me the highest love. Thy, Thy fulfills my heart and soul. Visualize the greatest love coming from the heart 
of the divine. The divine is above you and his heart is open as big as the universe, radiating the brightest love directly to your heart. It is such a powerful stream of light that it knocks you back, that it literally blasts negativity out. See it now bursting through the relationship soul, bursting through the soul of the other one you had called forth. All of you are receiving this tremendous blast of love from the divine. Your beloved creator wants for each of you to have the greatest love. And this love is literally melting the blockages. They cannot remain because the divine's love is the highest love. They cannot remain because the message of love melts all blockages. Offer your gratitude in your heart to your beloved Creator. Offer your gratitude to the soul of the other person you invited in. Offer your gratitude to the relationship soul. And in your heart, bow your head to the Divine Creator for the incredible blessing you have just received. And when you are ready, please return. <clears throat> so feel free to share whatever your experience was with this, if you saw anything, if you had any aha moments or insights. Um, the, I can share with you that the format today was unusual. You got to hear a lot of real-world answers and a lot of real-world practical ways to bring about resolve in your relationships, to bring about um, some uh, real-world solutions. And they really, really do work. <clears throat> um, what causes it to work? Practice. If you don't practice, you cannot expect results. Now, the amount of information that came was significant. It was not a small amount, and it, it needs to be absorbed, especially if you are new to the information. So I strongly recommend you earmark this uh, video uh, when it's finished, or even possibly right now. If you right-click on the image, there should be a choice of URL. Um, save that one. Uh, save it, stamp it, um, email it to yourself, whatever you need to do to not forget this particular video. I will be posting this on my YouTube channel. It's that good. Because the wisdom in it can be applied in almost every case in almost every relationship. And if you uh, listen to it again and again and apply the suggestions, it's unlikely that you will have uh, positive benefits from it. Now, as indicated, um, you can speed up and bring about um, a greater al alignment and resolve to uh, problem areas in relationships by taking advantage of the divine services. And those are either uh, very special blessings or crown chakra blessings or healing and transmission systems. There are many people that have quite a bit of blockages in their message center. Uh, that's the heart center. We keep a lot of pent up emotions. Sometimes it leads to depressions and anxieties because we don't have expression. Um, there's uh, just so many blockages in, in the heart center. And I'm very blessed to have received the abilities to offer a blessing which clears the Shen Xi Jing blockages. Uh, literally gives you a brand new radiant heart center, um, which if you were a spiritual aspirant, someone studying, trying to learn how to do this on your own, it would take you literally a hundred lifetimes to accomplish that kind of purity of a heart center that you can get literally within a few minutes, because that's the significance of this kind of a blessing. Uh, I say it with authority and I say it with, um, with confidence, because I have seen uh, again and again and again hundreds of people have uh, life-changing 
results as a result of a blessing of that nature. And so uh, be aware that that is available also. They're called the Healing and Transmission System. It's on my website, um, which is listed above the video. Uh, but if you have questions about what might be best for you, feel free to contact me. I am opening up again the blessing from last week, as well as any others I just mentioned. But the blessing from last week was a crown chakra blessing and three days of chastening and calligraphy. The crown chakra blessing was to open your heart and soul uh, to, to love. And uh, the calligraphy is literally a specific calligraphy. Um, there was only one made. Master Shah made it last year when he was in Hawaii. And, and I have uh, a direct uh, portal to it. And um, I trace that for three days on your behalf to bring about um, a more opening of the heart and soul. You can do that for your spouse, by the way, <laughs> which I'm sure many of you would really appreciate and likely see some results. So anyway, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I love you all. I'm very grateful. Tomorrow we will be focusing on finances and forgiveness in relationship to finances. Again, it might sound similar to what I did last week. But last week I was focusing on a different subject matter in relationship to finance. I was focusing on uh, ego and a lack of humility with finances. This week, tomorrow, I'm focusing on the power of forgiveness with finances. So I look forward to serving you that way. Please make sure if you haven't already to hit the share button after this. And I look forward to connecting with you tomorrow. I love you, love you, love you. Rihanna, I see you've just joined. Make sure you watch this video. It will help you a lot. Bye-bye, everybody.